and global warming is going to cause a lot of black swans. And, and you think that they're rare events that, that aren't predicted, but they really end up changing the world we live in, and global warming fits into that category. Okay, so that's the bad news. What should we do? Well, it turns out there's a lot we can do, and there's a lot we really have to do. I'm going to start off by talking about what you can personally do. And the first thing I have on that list is to ask your children for forgiveness, because no matter what we do at this point, it's going to be really bad for them, and we're, we're going to leave them this really awful mess. Uh, you can do things like get a fuel-efficient car. We have someone here who can tell you, Felix, can tell you all about that. Eat, you can eat less beef. Turns out that cow, one third of all the uh, non-ice-covered land on Earth is used for beef production between pasture lands and grain growing for the beef, and that's why they're cutting down the rainforest in Brazil is to grow soybeans, or to grow pasture land or to grow soybeans for cows. And it turns out because cows give off methane, which is very effective, uh, it, it, it turns out they, about 18% of all the greenhouse gases come from beef production. Another way of thinking about it, eating a pound of beef is like driving your car for an hour and a half with all the lights turned on at home. So that's one way to think about it. You should change your light bulb. There's, there's a compact fluorescent bulb in that uh, antique lamp back there. Uh, it, you'll save money immediately when you do it. There's no downside to it at all anymore. It's really, and, and, and by turning your thermostat down or up, as the case may be, depending on the season, wearing a sweater, keep you warm, those kind of things can help. Importantly, though, you need to talk to your family and friends and colleagues about what's happening and get them engaged on the subject. If you work for a company, you can get them to go green, and you can leverage your own impact into a much larger cause. And perhaps the most important thing you can do is talk to your elected leaders, because, as we're about to see, the things we really have to do uh, really have to happen at the national and global level. And the biggest obstacle to change right now is the Congress. A lot of people, you know, actually, People want to do something about it, but most of the inertia is in uh, the Congress right now. So what should our country do? We need to implement a cap-and-trade system or a tax on CO2 as quickly as possible. The one that's in Congress now is really watered down and will not be effective in, in turning the problem around. But it will put the structures in place so when everyone panics a few years from now, we won't have to spend a few more years putting those structures in place. We can just sort of increase the numbers a bit, increase the tax or increase the emission targets and things like that, or decrease the emission targets. So it's important to pass that law, but we should not fool ourselves that that's going to actually solve the problem. We need to have mandatory energy efficiency standards around the country. Folks in Berkeley pioneered this 25 years ago, or actually a little more than that now, and as you may know, in the last 25 years, while the rest of the country increased its energy per capita by 50 percent, California stayed the same. And basically that's because of its Title 24 building standards. And I don't see us suffering in our buildings compared to the, you know, New Jersey or anything like that. So there's really no excuse for not having that being nationwide and much more strict than it is now. And, and by the way, buildings are about 40 percent of all the greenhouse gases that are caused by buildings and energy for buildings. We have to ban coal-fired power plants because they give off the most CO2 per unit of energy, and just, there's just no excuse for doing that anymore. And we also have to get rid of the ones we have, which is a lot harder to do, but we have to do it because, as uh, Jim Hansen said, we have to get down to 350 parts per million. We're already at 387 and climbing at about three points per year, and the only way to really get down uh, is, is to get rid of coal plants and eventually other fossil fuels. We have to stop subsidizing fossil fuels. We give billions and billions of dollars every year to subsidize fossil fuels. We have to take that money away from fossil fuels and subsidize clean technology. We have to increase research spending a hundredfold. Well, it actually is compared to the Bush administration. We've already gone up a lot in the Obama administration. But, it re I mean, th this is tiny amounts of money compared to what needs to be spent in the future, but we have to understand the problem. We have to understand how fast the permafrost is melting. We have to understand how fast the methane is coming out of the ocean. We don't know these things. This is just a few billion dollars. We have to, you know, spend this money. Right now, the military spending is about this much. Medical spending is that much. 
and energy spending is that much. And believe me, the energy and the military spending <laughs> is going <laughs> to go way up uh, because of climate change if we don't do something about it. There's more we can do. We need to phase out beef. I explained why already. Uh, we have to, uh, it's happening, it's going to happen anyway, so we're going to have to prepare for extreme weather and droughts and floods and wildfires and, and war and things like that and sea level rise. Uh, so the planning they're doing now for like uh, the San Joaquin Delta, the, the dikes and things like that, they're assuming a couple of feet sea level rise. Well, they should be rethinking that about what it's really going to be. We need to research geoengineering. I have a whole section coming up on geoengineering in a moment, so we'll skip. But this, geoengineering essentially is trying to artificially control the climate planet-wide. We're doing it anyway by, by accident. <laughs> that's, what, that's what climate change is. It's accidentally doing a global experiment of what happens when you increase CO2 in the atmosphere. We're, we're about to find out. We need to support global family planning. There's too many people on Earth right now. This is, by the way, typically a taboo subject in climate change, that you can't really talk about controlling population, but it's going to be controlled one way or the other. I just think we should do it the humane way. And, we, and this December in Copenhagen is the follow-on to the Kyoto Protocol, where the world is coming together to figure out what to do about carbon in the next phase. And I, I can't tell you with certainty that there's going to be a really good result out of that, and we really need to. This is now the time. This is not a problem. If we wait even 10 years to start to tackle this problem, it will be too late. Once the permafrost starts putting out more CO2 than we do, it won't matter what we do in terms of reducing our emissions. We could stop the next day, and it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. That process could happen a few years from now. I'm not saying it will happen a few years from now, but it could happen that soon, and certainly within the next 10 or 20 years. So this, there's no time for waiting. But I spoke to a climate scientist at UC Berkeley, I had lunch with her, and I asked her, what do you think the temperature is going to be in the 20, 2100? Because she's the one who worked on the IPCC report that was this best case, and now she's doing all the updates with all the feedback mechanisms and the new emission plans and things like that. And she said, mm, 6 to 12 degrees warmer than today. C. I said, do you know what you just said? Yep. And she also said she could see no plausible scenarios where we reduce our emissions in time to avoid catastrophe. Nothing. If you were dictator of the world, nothing you could do at this point. That leaves one thing, plan B. First of all, plan A is you must reduce your emissions drastically. Plan B doesn't work unless you do plan A also. But it may not be enough. So what geoengineering is, is intentional control of the climate. We've been doing the accidental control of the climate so this is stepping in and trying to be a little more intelligent about what we do. As I mentioned, I, I personally, this is not a consensus at this point, although the discussion of geoengineering, even just the last six months, has been elevated quite a bit. It used to be like a little quiet thing you talked about, but now it's getting in mainstream uh, press as well. But uh, the, if, if you believe that it's already too late to solve the climate problem by only reducing emissions, then your only choice left is geoengineering. Now, be a little careful. In some people's mind, geoengineering is only a certain set of rather uh, intrusive things you do. To me, I include anything you do to, to lower the carbon in the air or to control the temperature of the planet, including some rather benign things that you probably should do, no-brainer. But So uh, just be a little careful. I, uh, just be a little careful. I use the word geoengineering a little more broadly than some people do. But in any case, some people like the concept of geoengineering because they think it's an excuse for not doing anything about climate change. Oh, we'll just fix it later using geoengineering. We can continue to emit the, the carbon that we do. That will not work. You need to use geoengineering to get rid of the carbon that's already there. If you continue to spew it out, all you'll be doing is just you know, reducing somewhat the amount you're putting out, 
but you won't really be getting to the problem. And like chemotherapy, geo geoengineering, some, some forms of geoengineering have really bad side effects. But that, like chemotherapy, you might lose your hair and, and feel really, really sick. But the alternative isn't quite acceptable either, is it? So that's why I, I liken it to that. Let's look at some.